morning everybody welcome to morning prayer this morning on thursday the 20th of august back in my study the weather this week has just been awful hasn't it so um inside and a little bit dark but um i'm sure you can hear all right which is the main thing today we celebrate bernard abbot of clairvaux uh, known as teacher of the faith he was a cistercian monk and uh, led the, the Cistercian order of monks for many years um, and was much loved and thought of as, as a, a wonderful teacher. Um, he entered the order I think very early at age 22 so all his life um, as a teacher of the faith um, and very much into um, individual spirituality um, which was maybe something more unusual in in his day. Um, so he was um, 1153 is when he died. So uh, very early on days of Christianity. So that's who we're thinking about today. If you're following readings today you um, might like to. The psalm, the psalm set for today is Psalm 78. Uh, a long psalm so it is verses 1 to 39 set for, for today. So that's Psalm 78 verses 1 to 39. And the Old Testament reading is continuing the book of 1 Samuel and it is the chapter 31. So the whole chapter 31. And into the New Testament, and we'll hear that in a moment, we're looking uh, continuing through Acts and it's Acts chapter 4 verses 32 to chapter 5 verse 11 so across the verse across the chapters 4 to 5 verse 32 chapter 4 to 5 11 so if you want to follow on or read later uh, those are the, the readings set for today so let's pray O Lord open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise the night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. And so the reading for today, or we'll have our canticle first. I have given you as a light to the nations and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. And that canticle, as our usual Thursday canticle, comes from Isaiah 42, verses 5 to 8. So this morning's New Testament reading is taken from the book of Acts, and it's chapter 4, starting at the 32nd verse. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid them at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each 
as they had need. There was a Levite, a native of Cyprus, Joseph, to whom the apostles had given the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He sold a field that had belonged to him, and then he brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. But a man named Ananias, with the consent of his wife Sapphira, sold a piece of property, and with his wife's knowledge, he kept back some of the proceeds, and brought only a part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Ananias, Peter asked, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the proceeds of the land? While it remained unsold, did, did it not remain your own? And after it, so, it was sold, were not the proceeds at your disposal? How is it then that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You did not lie to us, but to God. Now when Ananias heard these words, he fell down and died. And a great fear seized all who heard of it. The young men came and wrapped up the body, and they carried him out to be buried. After an interval of about three hours, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter said to her, Tell me whether you and your husband sold the land, and for such and such a price? And she said, Yes, that was the price. Then Peter said to her, so how is it you have agreed together to put the Spirit of the Lord to the test? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Immediately she fell down at his feet and died. When the young man came in, they found her dead. So they carried her out and buried her beside her husband and a great fear seized the whole church and all who heard these things. I think a great fear might <laughs> have pierced my heart too um, if I had seen such a thing. It, it's, it's rather a dramatic story, isn't it? Um, that these two, this husband and wife, sold a field and instead of giving all the money to the church, um, they kept some behind for themselves. Whereas Joseph beforehand had sold his field and given all the money, as had many other members. Um, a, a worrying story. Um, shall we all sell up and live together? I mean, where, where should we live? I suppose All Saints is probably the biggest. Um, St Mark's might be a nicer um, situation um, and and that's obviously where we get the idea of living in community and the idea for those early monasteries of which Bernard we um, heard about earlier was a part of and and even today of course when you send, enter uh, a monastery as a woman or a man uh, you sell sell up all your worldly goods and uh, you give money to to that convent um, which I suppose is fair enough because that's your life forevermore and where you're going to live and uh, um, so you, you don't earn <clears throat> while you're in there. Um, so that's I, I guess fair enough and that living in common was um, and still is um, perhaps an ideal um, but it's not the way of our world. Um, so I'm not going to ask you all to set up your houses and give it to the church, um, but it is often a passage that's used to talk about um, giving in the church and many churches tithe, which is uh, the giving of 10% of your income to the church. Um, and, and it is a time to think about how we give because of course, as we all know, the, the church is not made of money and the only way that we can continue our ministry in our um, areas is by raising money to do it. And, um, and thank you very much because you all pay for me.
to be here as your minister in, in the way that we pay our monthly giving to the diocese and our common mission fund, um, which is a lot of money that we have to raise. Anyway, I wasn't really going to want to talk about money, actually. Um, I was I was thinking about that reading and uh, every marriage service and we had a lovely wedding at St Mark's on Saturday um, Nick and Bethany um, and every marriage service when they just before the couples say their declarations to each other um, I have to say that bit out loud. I guess you will all remember. First, I'm required to ask if anyone here present knows a reason why these persons may not lawfully marry, they must declare it now. And we say that when we're reading the bands normally in church. Um, so I say that. And then I say to the couple, the vows you are about to take are made in the presence of God, who is judge of all, and knows the secrets of our hearts. And therefore, if either of you know a reason why you may not marry, you must declare it now. But I've always loved that piece, that, that in the presence of God, who is judge of all, and knows the secrets of our hearts. And that's, in that reading, that's what Peter says, you didn't lie to us as the apostles, you've lied to God. And I think that's more what that reading is about than really about the money and the living t together. It's about hiding from God. And if we're hiding from God, how much are we hiding from ourselves? I, I've, I, I love the fact that God, I've spoken about this before, knows the secrets of our hearts. He knows everything and yet he loves us so deeply still. Even those thoughts that we shouldn't have and perhaps are a bit wicked and or nasty and uh, and we should hide. He knows those and we can't hide them from him. So that relationship with God is so pure, so full of integrity. It's there's nothing between God and us. He knows everything. And therefore, there's nothing to hide from him. We can be completely honest with all our inner feelings, all the, the um, difficult thoughts we have, all the worries we have. He knows them already, so we can be open. And it's an amazing open relationship we can have with our Lord. Um, and that's the most wonderful thing. That he loves us despite everything. And we can be truly honest. And maybe in being truly honest with God, we can be truly honest with ourselves. And maybe that's something that's quite difficult sometimes. Honesty is more what that reading is about than money. So let's pray. Father in heaven, we pray that your will may be done on earth and heaven. We pray for our church. We pray for our benefice, for St. Denis, for all saints, for St. John's and for St. Mark's, for all who attend, for all who are attending now on our online services, for all our community in these difficult times. We pray for our Christian brothers and sisters here and around the world, where churches are closed everywhere. We pray that we would keep our sisterhood, our brotherhood with one another, support and continue to pray for each other. So we pray for our bishops here in this diocese, for Tim, David and Debbie. We pray for those in parishes around us, for James, our area dean.
we pray for, for all who teach us, who minister to us, and for all your people, for the Holy Spirit's gifts as we seek to serve you, for wisdom and courage as we communicate the gospel to people who have no room for God, for growth in commitment among us. Father, your kingdom come, your will be done. We pray for our Queen and country, for all nations of the world, for leaders who are dedicated to serving the people, for wisdom as they deal with difficult situations, for reconciliation where there is hatred and conflict, for justice to the poor and the excluded. Father, your kingdom come, your will be done. We pray for the people among whom we live and work, for our families who need our time and affection, for friends, especially any who feel hurt, let down, left out. For many who are isolated, for neighbours who long for someone to call, for those working, suffering from stress or poor management. Father, your kingdom come, your will be done. And we pray for all whose lives are blighted by illness, pain or frailty. For all who are enslaved to addictive habits. For all who find life bleak. For all who are grieving without the person they love. And we lift to you now all of those in our own hearts and minds and those whom we know who are in need of your healing. Father, your kingdom come. Your will be done. And we remember with thanksgiving all those who have died. All of those whom we have loved and see no more, who were such a part of our lives. For all those who are facing funerals in the coming weeks, or whose anniversaries are at this time of year. We commend them and all people to your mercy and peace. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the collect for today, the tenth week of of Trinity and remembering Bernard of Clairvaux. Merciful Redeemer, who by the life and preaching of your servant Bernard rekindled the radiant light of your church, grant us in our generation to be inflamed with the same spirit of discipline and love and ever to walk before you as children of light. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And so let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver you from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bless you. See some of you on Sunday or see you next week.